So this is lecture 25 of EC503. So what we're going to do is we're going to revisit sampling theory. Um, we're going to move away from the topics of lecture 24, where we looked at analog filters and analog design, especially with IR filters and their transformation to digital. What we're going to look at is we're going to get a start on, first of all, reminding ourselves what is sampling theory, what is downsampling, what is upsampling, what's decimation, what's interpolation. And then we're going to get a little bit of an insight onto what happens when we do sampling rate conversion. What happens if we have interpolator, we have decimator, or the other way around? You can have a combination of the two, and they perform a single operation. We saw a little bit of this before. Remember when we downsampled, downsampled, downsampled discrete signals, right? For, and let's say those discrete signals are sampled from analog signals. It's the equivalent of sampling the analog signal, the continuous time signal, but at a much lower rate. What we're going to look at here is a little bit more insight on how do we manipulate these different operations on this set of data. So what exactly are we looking at? So let me minimize. So recall, okay, so let's say this is our original digital signal, right? Okay, so that's original. So suppose I want to decimate. And then here, interpolate. So, de so decimate. So let's say we decimate by a factor of 2. So that means every second sample is chosen. Okay, like that. Interpolation, on the other hand, we fill in. So let me draw the original waveform because this is a little bit more tricky. Okay? And then let's say we interpolate by a factor of two. I'm basically filling in the gaps with more s samples. And we saw how that was done. We use like, we can use a variety of, we can, in this case, what we can do is we can we have this guy here, so we have a down sampler D. We have an uh, up sampler I here. And so what would we do? We would like, for instance, we would up sample, which would insert zeros, and then we would have a low pass filter. And what that low pass filter does is it smooths. So what do I mean by smooths? So what the interpolator does is it inserts zeros one after another, after another, after another, after another. And then the smoothing, it would basically take what the previous sample is and fill in the next one, right? So it, let me put as an aside. So let's say you have this, zero, this, zero, this, zero, this, zero. What, what the, uh, sm the low pass filter will do is it will smooth the last sample into the next value and thus you would obtain the next guy, more or less. Some, some processes are better than others, right? On the other hand, if you do downsampling, you usually do the LPF first, and then you do the downsampling. Why do we do that? Because we want to avoid evil aliasing, right? If we don't limit the bandwidth of our signal, Downsampling spectrally, what does it do? It widens our signal, it widens our spectrum. So notice, we have this guy here, we have this guy here. What would be really interesting is if we can bring these two guys together. So what do I mean? What I would be really interested to do is if I can do a sampling rate conversion, especially if it's fractional. So Let's say I want to, 
let's say right now I have this guy here, this original signal, but I want to change it up a little bit. Let's say I want to get rid of these sampling instances altogether. And instead, let's say, take this segment and put it at one-third and two-thirds. Not in the middle, but space them out differently, right? So now what I want is have a new sample here close to that guy and this guy close to, but not midway. So I'm now doing not an integer up-sampling, down-sampling. I'm doing something fractional. And that's what, so the way you would accomplish that is to combine these two guys together where you would have a low pass filter, you would have an up sampler, you would have a down sampler, and that way you can essentially reposition all your samples and still have the same data. So what, ex what does it do exactly? So let me clean this thing up. So what will it do exactly? So l suppose here's your original data. In essence, what you're doing, and I don't know why I'm drawing such complicated wave. <laughs> what I'm doing is I'm taking the envelope. Oh, let's say I have a point there. Yay, I can do that. And what happens is, so now I have the envelope. And now I resample the envelope. Envelope. And it could be very different than what I have here. So it might not be some sort of integer multiple of the current sampling rate or, or one over an integer of it. It could be something very, very, very different. It could be like two thirds of the rate, right? So what I might have at the end is still the same looking shape envelope wise, but the sampling instances are located quite different. And that's what we're going to look at today. OK. So, so that, I, again, I want to take the surprise out of it. So this is the case study where I think some of you have experience. So I'm going to bring this into context. So what this little box over here with these two little antennas is, that's a USRP, so that's a software-defined radio. So this is where one application of where you go from analog domain to digital domain. The analog domain is the air around us and the wireless signals that are in it. The antennas pick off that energy, sends it down a copper wire, and into an analog digital converter at 100 mega samples per second. So we have 100 mega samples per second into the radio and 100 mega samples per second going out of the radio. So we take 100 mega samples per second, convert it into a continuous time waveform, and we take continuous time waveforms and convert them into 100 mega samples per second data. Now, that data, we cannot, we cannot take 100 mega samples per second, dump it onto gigabit ethernet, that's one gigabit per second data rate, that's in UDP packets, send it to a computer, and then be handled by a, mi a, a general purpose microprocessor that has a processing power of 2 to 4 gigahertz. This will not work. You're going to clog up, you're going to totally clog up your microprocessor. Like 512? 512, right? Have you tried 4? Have you tried 1? No. You're asking for it. Because what ends up happening is, there's just way too much samples. It's, it's, if it doesn't clog up your gigabit ethernet and your UDP packets actually do make it across. So what's the difference between UDP and TCP IP? TCP IP, if the packet doesn't make it, it will retransmit. UDP, packet doesn't make it, packet lost. Okay? So what ends up happening is, even if your data does make it over, your microprocessor system and whatever software that's running on it will not be able to handle it. You're going to basically be dropping information. It is lost. It's useless. So, and then some software 
Like, for instance, we use Simulink a lot in my ECE 4305 class. Simulink time is not equal to real time, as much as we want it to be. Okay? So, and it turns out that Simulink is just unable to handle real time 100 megabit, uh, 100 mega sample per second data coming in. So you have to, you have to do a sampling rate conversion. Because if you don't, when you're on the, when you're on the transmit, this is what happens. True story. This is what happens. No, no, just kidding. What ends up happening is your wireless data, it'll go, like what happens is your radio will be starving for information because your radio cannot produce information fast enough. Right? Your simulink is just going along, chukka, 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 or GNU radio or whatever you're using. And your 100 mega sample per second is like, okay, you have any more, you have any more, you have any more? And it's like, it's waiting there, and that's bad news for wireless communications because you get, bzzz, let's suppose wireless signals sound like that, and then nothing. And then more data, and then nothing. And more data, and then nothing. What happens when you have on off, on off, on off, on off, on off wireless behavior? You use up a lot of bandwidth, you have a lot of out of band interference, it's kind of bad stuff. Your receiver won't be able to figure out. It will say, What the heck are you sending at me? Right? Seriously, true story. And then the other way, Simulink is just going to be dropping packets, or GNU Radio is going to be dropping packets, or whatever you're using is going to be dropping packets because they're coming more than the radio can, uh, not the radio, the microprocessor can handle. So this is a perfect situation where we resample. All we need is just enough information from the 100 mega samples per second to get the signal. We don't need 100 mega samples per second worth of information. We need a fraction of that, maybe 512 of that. So this is where sampling rate conversion comes in. So what sampling rate conversion does is we can basically, what I want to do is 100 mega sample is obviously, maybe for some applications is great, but let's say some software is not up to the job of handling that much information. What I want to do is if I had to choose, or if I need to reconstruct the signal and resample it at a rate that my software can handle it, can I do that all in the digital domain? I don't want to go back into analog and resample. Can I take the existing digital signal and redo it such that my computer can handle it? That's the goal. So the way we do it is the following. Take Mr. Interpolation formula, right? Remember this? So this came from several lectures ago. We can recreate an analog waveform by taking the sample data and then we have some sort of pulse shape. In this case, it's sync, which is the ideal shape for reconstruction. And we have a sampling rate, which is 1 over the sampling period. And we saw what happens when we take that continuous signal and now resample it at a new sampling period, Ty. So what does it look like? So what am I doing here? So let's say. I have a lot of time on my hands, and I take digital signal, make analog out of it, resample it using new A to D converters to get the desired sampling rate. This is what we have. Just like at the beginning of this lecture, we have all those discrete samples, right? So we have these guys here, but I don't want them at that rate. I want more of them. I want more samples. I curve fit them using that sync pulse, so I get this nice continuous time shape. Now I resample like a demon. I sample, 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 sample. Hmm, okay, not bad. And this is what I want. Now, what I don't want is to do the middle thing. I don't want to make analog anything. Is there an all digital solution for pulling off from X of N to Y of N? And the answer is yes. C. So what you want to do is you take these two cases. So you take the um, decimator or downsampling stage, right? This guy here, you take the interpolator upsampling stage here, and you meld them together, right? My mind 
to your mind. You know, that type of meld. So only people who know Star Trek, right? I know who they are. Anyone who's smiling, people are not smiling. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> I'm teasing. I am really teasing. So what happens is decimation, we saw what the process does. You're subsampling. Boom, 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 boom. Interpolation, we're creating even more samples and inserting it in between. Maybe multiples samples. So now we need to take a step back and say, OK, so in the frequency domain, how does this look like? So in section 11.2 of your textbook, we saw that the spectrum of a downsampled signal, what does it look like? It's widened by a factor of the downsampling, and it also has an amplitude that's one d, one uh, over the decimation factor d. Yeah, d doesn't sound right. On the other hand, when you interpolate, okay. So we go through this process of interpolation. We're basically filling in i minus 1 zeros if we're trying to interpolate by a factor of i. And then we're curve fitting those samples across from one sample to another. And what we get here is essentially when we upsample, what do we get? We get spectral compression and then replicas, right? Remember? When we upsample, the spectrum gets narrowed, it gets compressed by a factor of i, and then copy, 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 from minus infinity to infinity. Spectra is compressed by factor of i. So now, let's do the two together. And so what we get is this guy here. So the trick is the following. You upsample by factor of i. You low pass filter, right, with h of k. So note, I'm not going into the continuous time domain. I don't want to go to continuous time domain. Analog digital converters are not cheap, and they're not fun to debug, right? So what I want to do is I want to do this all in the digital domain. So take interpolation, low pass filter it, decimate your set. And what these values here are, what do they do? So we have a frequency, f of x. Now what we have is a new sampling frequency, i f of x. And then we low pass filter. We still have i f of x. Down sample. Now it's the new sampling frequency is f y is equal to uh, f v over d. And if you replace f v, it's going to be f of x times i over d. So that's the rational, right? So let's say I upsample by 3, downsample by 4. No, no, let me take that back. Upsample by 3, downsample by 2. I would have a sampling rate conversion of 3 over 2 between old and new sampling rates. Yay! OK? So let's, let's visually, let's look at that. OK. Boom. Okay, so here we have f of x, that's our sampling rate there. Then we send it to the interpolator, so now what we have is f of v is equal to i f of x, so now we have a higher sampling rate. Then we go through the low-pass filter. The low-pass filter is operating at a sampling rate of i f of x. And then the downsampler, f of y is equal to f of v over d, which is going to be equal to i over d f of x. So what this means is if I have a digital signal that looks like this, okay, at this point, it's going to look like this. Let's say I put three guys in between, three zero values. Okay? Then I low pass filter. So at that point, I I 
I have that. These are the original guys. And these are sort of the filled in guys, right? Now they have non-zero values, and they're sort of, they fill out an envelope, if you will. Then I downsample. And the downsample will look something like this. And what happens is maybe I'm, I'm upsampling by 3. Let's say i is equal to 3, but I'm downsampling by 2. So what I'm doing is I'm throwing away what? I'm throwing away every second guy. Boom, boom. Actually, no. Upsampling by 4. Downsample. This is downsampling by 3. Sorry. So I'm throwing away every two samples. So I keep one, throw away two. Keep one, throw away two. And I still get that same envelope, right? Spectrally. What does this look like? So this is time domain. N, 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 N. F spectrally, what I've got is something that looks like this. So let's say I have spectrum that looks like this. Then after interpolation, what do I have? So it's by a factor of 4. So it gets compressed by a factor of 4, right? So let's say this is minus omega c. And that's plus omega c. Now it's minus omega c over 4, plus omega c over 4. And then it has periodic replicas, right? And then the low pass filter, what it does is it selects 1 at dc. So what I've got is I've got minus omega c over 4, omega c over 4, and that's it. Everything else is zeroed. And then the downsampling by 3. What it does is, what happens when you downsample? It, it spreads out by a factor of 3. So now I've got m minus omega c, 3 over 4. So it's 3 fourths the original bandwidth, right? And 3 omega c over 4. So I don't have the original bandwidth. So what I've just done spectrally is I've com compressed this to 3 fourths the original bandwidth, and I've resampled it, so now I have, um, instead of the original sampling rate, now I have kind of, it, the positions are a little bit off, but I have three, um, blah, what would it be? Four-thirds the amount of sample data rather than the original sample data. So this is sampling rate conversion. So in your problem sets, you're going to have several problems exactly like this. What is the sampling rate conversion? What would be the cutoff frequency in order to avoid aliasing? Because this is going to be a problem here too. And this is used a lot, like in software-defined radio, which I just showed you about, and a lot of other applications. OK? So let's see. Mm, this time we'll keep. So to find out a little bit more, let's read um, Exercise for a Student, section 11.4 in your course textbook. OK? So that concludes lecture 25. So, so.